Hello everybody, this is Bardrich. It's uh, August 11 and today it's uh, two years since uh, Terry Davis passed so I thought we could all uh, cherish his memory and that's why I have this image of Terry and his cat here. Uh, but this video is not uh, about Terry Davis, it's about ass, i3 ass, i3 assistance scripts, which is my own uh, collection of um, shell scripts that I use to ease the use of the window manager known as i3 WM. And uh, probably most of the viewers of this video already know about this, but you probably don't know about the latest uh, update here, which was done one hour ago, a new release was done. And yeah, maybe we could look at the release uh, page instead here. And this is the release notes. And I realized when I published this that I should maybe not make these big updates. You know, it's, it, it, it gets a lot of, <laughs> you have to write a lot of release notes stuff here, but whatever, now it's done. Uh, I've learned a lot. Uh, let's uh, see what's new. I3 flip. I3 flip is this script that you can flip uh, the focus inside a container. Um, and that might look like, what, 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 do you have a script for that? Yeah, it's, it, this is not a built-in functionality into i3 at all. You, it, it's really weird with the focusing. They, they improved it a bit in the latest uh, release of i3, but it's still not, you cannot do this. It, 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 because this cycles the focus, maybe it's more uh, apparent what's going on. If we have three containers here, you can see it cycles these three tabs, but it never moves the focus out into a different container here. Um, I have rewritten, I have rewritten most of the scripts quite a lot, so I will not talk so much about the uh, code and the source code and stuff. I will try to, to focus here on, on the actual uh, uh, experience uh, of the scripts or the new features, their new visual features. Because a lot of the features I've added are things like this, JSON option, verbose option, and dry run option is added to a lot of the scripts and those are more or less only for uh, development and I will not really talk about it here. Get back to uh, that stuff soon, later in this video. Okay, i3 flip. We now use i3 viswis instead of custom org script. Internal things, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but it made everything more reliable and move function now move works, uh, which uh, didn't really work prior, uh, or it did work when, when you moved, because now you can see I moved this tab here inside the container, it moves the position of it. Yeah, you get, you get what that means. And I'm using two key bindings here. Maybe I should use this. Uh, I found a, a, a new, or a new, it's actually very old, uh, I thought I added it here, maybe not. Uh, key, there it is. And we can add that guy like this. This is nice. Um, so I move uh, container uh, this container with i3 flip here by pressing super and w because I have defined that in my i3 key config. Um, and this worked, uh, this, this works just as it did um, prior to this update, but now it also works properly if the container is, uh, have a different type of split and not just tabs and stacks work, so, so this should work for any kind of, of uh, uh, container type. Now we have stacks here. <clears throat> and it should also work, hopefully it does now. Uh, even on a workspace that isn't i3 FIDA enabled, like this one. Uh, if we just do echo hello here, so we know that we have a different container and it should work to move this container here. And this is this workspace is a normal i3, i3 workspace. This is a special i3 workspace using i3 FIDA, which is the next uh, script I have updated here or in the notes. 
uh, because I haven't really, uh, there, there are, as you can see, there are no new features, it just works better and it's, everything is a lot better and faster uh, of the scripts that I have uh, given attention. There are a couple of scripts that I haven't given any attention and they work exactly like before, but we, we get back to all that. Uh, because this this guy here, that is uh, like my pet project and, and the thing I have um, spent the most time refining because uh, Yeah, the reason I uh, started this whole update was actually uh, I made one one of my latest videos here on YouTube uh, was uh, I don't know if you remember but it was a like a response to a reddit uh, uh, thread uh, i3wm best window manager worst community or something it's called and you can even see in the thumbnail now it's hard to see here when it's so, so small but the, this thumbnail actually shows a, a, a glitch here a, a very visual graphical glitch in i3 that happened when I was toggling my i3 theta containers and um, especially this operation it really glitched out when I did hide because um, i3 feed it works like this you know it's four containers one a b c and d and then we have this main horizontal split here uh, which is goes by the vertical axis but it is actually a horizontal split because the split happens on a horizontal axis so even if this is vertical it is a horizontal split whatever that's internal talk but it might be good to know uh, uh, nevertheless this uh, split here it divides uh, you could think of it it divides these four containers into two different groups uh, and internally i call these groups uh, families <coughs> and you can we should also bring this guy up so we can hide uh, and toggle a group by moving using the move commands i3 feed on move uh, so for example now this container the c container here has focus if i would move that to the left uh, one of the main and base uh, uh, things to know about i3 feed is that it only allows for these four containers it doesn't allow any other containers on the workspace so if we try to move this container to the left there are no containers there and we already have all the four containers here so what would happen is that it would hide the group to to the right and that might sound a bit weird but it is it to me it actually feels quite logical because if i would move it to the left again then it kind of means move this container to the left and show whatever is supposed to be shown to the right. And I don't know it, it, how um, visual this is, but it is th this operation is more than twice as fast now. It's much less glitchy and much more fluent, and it's also m just more stable. It doesn't uh, it used to forget the split size and stuff like that, and it also works uh, really well. Because there you can see, now I moved the container to the right. And then it uh, moved the C container to the right, meaning it will show the, the window group, the other window group to the left when we move, move it to the right. And if I move it to the right again, it will hide the, container, uh, the window group to the left. And the same logic goes for up and down, uh, but then it will uh, toggle and hide the, the sibling container, which I call the, the container related to the current container in the current group or family. So if I move this container down, it hides the other container, of course, move it down again, it shows it. I can also do this. So you have four containers, but as you could see uh, before also, you, the, you can uh, have these four containers. They are now, all of them are tabbed, but we could change uh, the split. And, and so, so you're not uh, limited to uh, four windows. You're just limited to these four different containers. And uh, in my opinion, it is not a limitation at all. Uh, it is uh, a quite powerful uh, uh, layout 
But I have made it much better, not just uh, this, uh, that it uh, is faster uh, to, to do everything and more reliable. Uh, I have also added a new um, feature or, or way this works now. And it's described here. Uh, and yeah, we can use the same example as we have here, except because I have a window rule for EDC, which is a terminal chat application. And if I would open that, there we can see EDC opened here. And this is the D container because that's the rule uh, it, it uh, follows. It moves this to the D container uh, with a rule looking exactly like this in my i3 config, except that I have move D here. So that will uh, means that it will automatically place EDC in the D container when it is uh, spawned. And that is exactly how it used to work. Uh, but uh, What's different now is that I think I should do this actually. I go into the source code here for i3 FIDA because all I need to do to get the old behavior for this example is to comment this thing out. I can close EDC again, open it again, same thing happens. It, it opens itself in the D container. Uh, and this is the container I want uh, EDC to be. I have a kind of a special uh, theme for my EDC, which makes it work uh, well in a narrow uh, terminal like this, as uh, in the sidebar, so to speak. Uh, but uh, prior to this update, if the layout would look like this, uh, which uh, it never did uh, because I never switched layout because this stuff never worked well, you know. If I now open EDC, you see, it plays itself in this container, in the D container. A, whoops, another Terry. Whoa, <laughs> no, another Terry. Uh, A, B, C, and D. So, of course, EDC is placed in the D container because that's the window rule we have set. Uh, but this new update here now, uh, as you could see, I commented out some uh, special code there. This code uh, actually figures out uh, where the initial D container uh, is now located. And, and what I mean by that, I call it virtual positions. So the virtual position for the D container is 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and I keep track of this, uh, where the initial position of the uh, container is. And that means that if I close EDC again here now, and now if I open it, you see it's, it spawns itself in, in the B container, but that is the virtual position of, of uh, uh, the D container. You don't have to do anything to your uh, rules in i3 or anything. It will just keep track of this when you switch the layout around. And it even works, you know, of course, uh, if we would do this and switch place of these two. Close EDC. Uh, can even do this. So now the D container isn't even visible, but it still knows that EDC should be placed here. It's uh, a bit complicated to, to explain it, but it's... Uh, in one way, it's also very easy, and as you can see, it's just this uh, block of code here, really. And of course, uh, to keep track of this uh, 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 virtual positions, that's uh, stored in the special array that we get with i3 list. Uh, because I, that's uh, an update I've, I have done to that, is to store these virtual positions here. Virtual position A is 3, and that means this uh, uh, actual container here, that is 3, uh, or this is actual, actually C, which is located, whatever, let's not, let's not talk too much about this. But it, it, it kind of just works, uh, and it is uh, really, really cool, because it also uh, can translate now like split sizes, for example. If we would have, um, if, we, if it would look like this, and now I can press super P here, which applies my uh, uh, layout here. Prior to this release, it would not uh, resize it correctly here. It would, it would be uh, a completely reversed, uh, it would look something like this. Because this is like the normal split size. This is, um, let's do this instead. Uh, we do this. This, this, 
this, um, this, this, this. <laughs> I really moved everything around. This is uh, the, my normal split size. Super P, it goes here. Minus 400 AB split. AB. So this is the AB split, the, the, <laughs> the vertical uh, or the horizontal split here. So AB minus 400 and 400 uh, minus 400 means 400 pixels from the right side of the screen. AC is AC. So this split and that is located 220 pixels from the top of the screen. So here. And then we have BD split, which is 252, so just slightly below, just as we see here. Uh, but prior to this uh, uh, update here now, it wouldn't understand uh, that when I switched uh, layout around here, and it would apply the same uh, uh, splits and move this 400 pixels, the AB here, because internally in i3, this is still the A container, this is the B container, this is the D C container and this is the D container. So uh, whatever it's it. I have spent a lot of time on on features like this uh, that is kind of almost impossible to describe and uh, um, very internal things. I have also spent a lot of time like uh, uh, with this verbose uh, options and stuff to to really figure out everything that was working and not working and I have there are all kinds of under the hood things uh, that I have done and here's another one i3 get you know um, and we should show this guy again and we could do go here i3 get it's just a nice little command line utility to get uh, i3 information by default it just prints the container id of the currently active window which is this terminal but you can also use the print option and then you could print the title if you want to, the class, the instance, whatever. And then it prints title, class and instance name here. Um, there's not that much uh, things that are different. One very important update here uh, that I think is a major improvement to everything because this, this is something that is used uh, from all kinds of places in, in, in the other scripts here is that uh, prior to this update, I was doing something like this, while true do sleep uh, 100 milliseconds, and then I executed uh, and parsed the i3 tree, which is uh, a crazy JSON that you can get if you type this command, i3 message dash t get underscore tree. This is uh, the magic thing, you know, in, in this uh, JSON tree here, you got all, all available information about your current uh, window manager session. As you can see, it's a, it, it's a lot of, lot of <laughs> uh, data here. And I used to parse this with the uh, awk. Uh, and I still do that in some cases here in, in the i3s suit, but not with i3get anymore. Instead, I use uh, bash actually to, to parse this with a single uh, bash regular ex ex expression. We will not get into what, what's going on there, but whatever. But also prior to this release, I used to parse this uh, information with awk every 100 milliseconds if you would execute uh, this i3get script with the sync option. And the sync option, uh, what that does is uh, it will not stop searching because you can search for Windows with this i3get uh, and then instance htop no matching windows. But if we would do uh, htop and then use the sync option, which for some reason is spelled with a K, now you can see it doesn't exit out the script here. It waits now for, for the htop window to appear. If I open htop, there you can see it stopped searching, but it, it found it and printed uh, the, the container ID. So this can be a really good uh, way if, if you are creating a, a script and you want to make sure that a window exists. It, uh, because sometimes it's not enough to just uh, wait for a process to start. Uh, it, it, it can take uh, sometimes several seconds before uh, the, the window you are waiting for is created by, uh, by some applications, like complicated applications like uh, uh, Blender or Calibre or, or something like that. 
or even a web browser it takes a couple of seconds to, to create a window. So this is a nice uh, uh, way to do that. But it used to be a kind of a nasty way to do that because it, uh, to uh, find this new window, it just executed this, parsed this loop 10 times every second till it found uh, the window. But now instead I use i3 message, message uh, subscribe here, which we could also execute, I guess. We have done videos about this. Uh, well, how do you write this now? Is it win window? It's like this weirdest syntax. If I'm, uh, maybe it's ah uh, whatever ah uh, sub subscript whatever. I think it's sub. I have subscribe. Okay, and then window, something like this, whatever. I don't remember exactly how you write this, but uh, uh, this is what I use. And every time a window event uh, occurs um, uh, that we like, uh, that Every time a window event occurs, then I look if uh, this, the window we are searching for exists. And that this uh, happens a lot <laughs> less frequent than 10 times a second. You know, a window event, this is not a window event. If I select text here, it's not an, an i3 window event. A window event is when you select a different window, uh, create a new window and, and things like that. So, so in reality, this should m most of the time only get uh, uh, triggered like two, one, two, three times or something instead of ten times a second, uh, and and that was uh, cause of uh, that method could actually uh, um, drain a lot of resources uh, in in worst case scenarios, which happens sometimes. So this is a, a a very big improvement, but still it's something that no one will kind of notice at all. Uh, but it is noticeable because it's also much faster now. It reacts to new windows much faster uh, while still consuming less resources. Another uh, small uh, thing here is that the output format, uh, this uh, uh, i3 get uh, thing here, I'm going to print the title and stuff. If we try to print uh, something that's not uh, available, for example, mark here, if I add m, you can see it prints this. Uh, i3get could not find m. Prior to this release it would just ignore that and not print anything. But that would mean that uh, for, for instance if you would have m and then uh, f for floating state here, then we can, now we can see that this line, yeah we know when it starts with two dashes i3get then something went wrong there, couldn't find m. But then we get user off. Uh, this makes it also more reliable uh, if you want to use the output uh, and store it in an array or something like that. I think that's better, but that may or may not uh, break uh, script. Uh, th this is a breaking change because um, you might also rely on this, uh, uh, like doing, if we just search for a mark here, and then you get this. And you might have had a, a, a script that stored this uh, output in a variable var equal this then we can do echo var uh, but maybe in your script you would do if var has a value you know and echo do something and now that will always get triggered I don't know if you get what I mean, but I, if you know what I mean here, you know what, what this is and it shouldn't be too much work uh, uh, to, to change your scripts. You know, you have to test now for a double dash if you want to make sure, uh, if you want to test for, for an empty value. I think this is better at least. Uh, it is a bit weird. Maybe it, I shouldn't have added this, but I, I, I think it's better. Uh, and another thing with this mark, it prints the marks differently now. It prints all of the marks. Pre th that was a, actually a bug uh, previously. If you would have more than one mark on a window, it would only print the first mark. Uh, 
but now it prints the whole list and it actually uh, includes uh, the square brackets. So we could even do this i3 msg mark this is marky. There, now we have marked this window and now we will actually get the output here. We can see we get the whole array thing. Uh, and if we would add more marks here, let's see if I can do that. Uh, mark, I think it's dash dash add to mark. I3 message, oh, maybe we need to do, I3 message is so weird. Okay, now, there. Now it prints uh, the whole list here of, of marks on this uh, particular active window here. Uh, that's uh, also a different uh, uh, way here now. And that might also mean that if you relied on this uh, fetching the marks, because I think the last version, it also just printed the name of the mark without the double quotes. Uh, now you have to uh, form up this output somehow if you were using this for uh, uh, getting marks. I think it's a kind of a rare uh, thing and especially if you have multiple marks on a window that's uh, uh, that's not common uh, at all but it could happen and now now it works and, and this was actually a requested and a reported issue uh, that I uh, fixed here with this so uh, sorry if that broke uh, anything but it should be able you should be able to fix it you just have to parse out with a little bit different Whatever, we, we will dwelled more than uh, long enough on i3 get and i3 corn. I don't think we have to say anything about uh, it. Um, yeah, whatever, this is internal stuff, but it uh, also makes everything a lot faster, especially when you're using i3 feeder, but I haven't done that much. i3 corn is one of those uh, scripts that I have almost not done anything to. Uh, i3 list also same there. I changed one uh, one thing in the orc, uh, orc loop and made the script like twice as fast and then I barely did anything uh, new to it except adding this virtual position uh, 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 stuff here. I also added these uh, keys here x and then name of the splits uh, and they contain which workspace a family is located at. That's also another internal thing because now when I toggle this uh, window group here, the, the B and D container here, if I do this, now they are uh, hidden. And now I, I actually hide the whole group. Uh, prior to this, I, I did uh, hide the, the two containers individually. And then when, when I wanted to show it, I had to recreate the group and place the containers individually and that's one reason why it's much faster now but there are others uh, i3 menu also almost no uh, haven't done much to that code either uh, but it also supports this uh, uh, virtual positions meaning for example i have um, a script here yeah whatever if i press super o it will list out some podcasts uh, that i have saved here that i uh, can listen to uh, in a Rofi menu, in an i3 menu, and I have set it so, so that, that it should display the menu in the B, over the B container, which is located here, you know. Uh, and now this works, even if the B container would be located there, press super O, it knows that by using these uh, i3 list commands, whatever thing. That's more or less the only, only thing I've done with uh, i3 menu. I also fixed some a, a, a typo. I, I saw that also meant that, uh, or maybe it wasn't this. No, it wasn't this script. Or maybe it was, whatever. i3 run. Um, no big change in i3 run uh, at all, actually. Uh, just some cleanup of the code, also using this uh, uh, passing force, yeah, or whatever, let's not get into it, because i3 run, that's the only uh, place I found where these uh, virtual positions gets weird, uh, because uh, i3 run actually figures out where to place the containers, uh, and it figures out where to place them 
correctly place them in a way. It, it, let, let's not get into it. But you can execute i3 FIRA with the force option and then it will uh, um, ignore the virtual positions. So if you have i3 FIRA, yeah, we can even do it here. So i3 FIRA move B container and then you should place this container over Terry here, which it does. Uh, make it floating again and then we can switch things around execute the same command place itself in the B container but if you use the force option this is uh, I guess good to know and uh, place it in the B container you should also add B is an arg argument to move so you have to do something like this but now it will place it in the actual B container it will not take the virtual position into account but the only place I, I have found in all of my scripts everywhere that I needed to, to add this force option was inside i3 run itself. So uh, hopefully this uh, virtual position stuff, that is something that no one needs to think about at all. Uh, things should just work and work even better than they worked before for those uh, using this. And here's another weird one, i3 visuis. Uh, this is uh, the script I have spent most time with uh, besides i3 fira but there is like no uh, change in, in behavior at all and this with that's uh, used to, to change the focus of, of the containers here you see I focus now here is the focus now I focus right then we have this the, the keyboard thing there and then focus down this might also look like just normal obvious behavior why would you need a script for this but trust me you do uh, otherwise if i would focus left with normal i3 it would focus the tab to the left so this avoids that and, and knows uh, what it actually does is it uh, it uh, take a look at the visual containers that's why it's called this there for visual wizard or something uh, so so it knows exactly what containers are actually vis visible and, uh, and that is kind of a weird thing when you have uh, tabs and stuff like that um, but this makes that work but I can also use this i3 vi uh, viswis if I use it on the command line like this if we just do this and then we can say up then it should move the focus up upwards here which it, which it does you can also do this uh, if we do parent uh, uh, and then we say up Th this is a secret undocumented uh, way to use this but you can do this didn't work maybe we have ah, I think we have to do this even yeah it's it's super weird because it's a hidden feature but this is how I use it internally uh, when we do this, the parent option here, that means that it should print uh, the parent container. Uh, and this is the parent container uh, of the, the star here, means that this window, uh, this container is focused. This is the container ID, and here we can see X, Y, W, and H, like X, Y. Yeah, the position and geometry of the uh, window and which container, uh, uh, which parent container, the i3 theta parent container here is printed here. But I also got this uh, super strange uh, output here. Uh, and this is actually, even if it looks like it's two lines, it's actually just one single line. So if you would do this, then it just prints uh, all, all of these. And as you can see, they are sevdo uh, variables meaning that you could do this. You shouldn't do it because it's illegal, you know, to use eval, but you could do it. So if you would eval, evaluate uh, this output of the first line of i 2 wiswis with the secret undocumented uh, um, uh, thing here, then you got all of these uh, variables here. And then I can print here, for example, echo group size prints five. As we can see, we have one, two, three, four, five containers in this group. So that is what that group size is. Uh, uh, and this first in group is the window ID of the first, and the last in group is the window ID of the last tab. And that's um, with that information, the group size and the windows IDs of the first and last, uh, that's basically all I need for this i3 flip uh, thing. 
uh, and it actually uses this i3 whiz whiz to to uh, know how, how to flip around and stuff like that but i also use it in i3 theta to figure out if uh, if uh, there are any actual containers above and below and stuff so so this script is uh, often executed internally uh, with this uh, secret uh, methods here but you could also use it without the secret methods uh, as i just showed you and then it will just focus uh, focus around whatever um, so it shouldn't be any difference for users, but it's a big difference with the, or the, all of this happened before also. It all, it, it, I, I used uh, a similar method prior to this, but it was much less output here. I didn't have this group size, group position, and, and the group information at all here, really. Like all of these uh, uh, values are new. Uh, but that made it so that I could remove a bunch of custom awk scripts and stuff from, from uh, yeah, for example, i3 corn and uh, i3 theta and, and i3 flip and use this same uh, thing instead. Whatever. All in all, it's just so much more reliable and uh, nice to use this now. It works uh, a lot better, uh, in my opinion. And I think you, you, you will notice uh, a difference if you use any of the scripts. But as I also mentioned, there are a couple of the scripts that I barely have touched. For example, i3 corn and i3 menu, which are two kind of big uh, scripts. Uh, also i3 var here, which is a really weird script. And this, I plan to remove this uh, actually from i3 as here. So just be aware, I will... I will not deprecate it now and I will not deprecate it in the next version, but I will probably from next ver uh, in the next version like make a deprecation announcement. Well, now I announced that I would will announce a deprecation of the script, but whatever. It will it will get removed from the project because it's such a stupid uh, uh, thing really. <laughs> uh, and I have instead started to, to, to make like um, custom i3 var similar things where I need it, especially in i3 theta, wh whatever, you, you don't have to think about this, but there might be users of this i3 var script, but you should really try to figure out some, some, some uh, other way to do, do it. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, it, it's just too stupid uh, um, to... What I, I don't even want to talk what, uh, talk about what it does. Uh, it's, it's just a stupid thing. So that might get removed. It will probably be removed. i3gw is also a script that hasn't got any updates, but that script is like, <laughs> this is the whole script. There are no functions or anything. It's just like five lines and it, nothing has changed. Uh, and that's another script that I, uh, have started to, to move away from internally, but I will not remove it from i3s because I still think it's a, a kind of a useful uh, thing and it kind of belongs in, in this collection. Uh, and I will not talk about what that does either because that, that's another uh, uh, unsupported i3 thing here, but whatever. Uh, but I have found that it's also much more efficient to do this internally in the scripts. But I. I think I will make a separate with video about this. Uh, some some discoveries I have done here uh, to improve um, i3 scripting or whatever whatever we should call it. But uh, just quickly here, here is a function called messy, and messy uh, takes i3 message arguments, uh, add all the arguments to one variable here, msg string, and that means that. In i3 theta now instead of executing like 15 20 different i3 messages and now only execute one uh, i3 message and i i think i want to make a separate video about that whatever there i, I there's so much <laughs> we could talk about and and uh, there, it's so easy to get sidetracked here if we start looking at the actual code. But believe me, I, I have spent a lot of time and written a lot of code and I got the commit history to, to, to back that claim up. Uh, we have this i 3 s dev uh, repository here, or it's actually an i 3 s dev is a, uh, what's it called, organization. 
and it's uh, I, I don't really it is a public organization you can go here and, and find these scripts and clone them and whatever but I don't really recommend it if, if you are not a i3s developer uh, but here we can see uh, more uh, uh, clearly what the the actual commit history and stuff I hope I, I don't know how it worked here now when I merge these well here we can see and this is just i3 feeder this is July 23 so I don't know I, I, about a month I have been working almost or more or less every day and I haven't committed every day but I have worked on this every day some days hours some days hour <laughs> and this is just i3 free i be, believe me there's so much uh, uh, crazy so let's talk about that let's talk about that i have spent so much time here and most of the time hasn't been that fun actually it's like uh, i really question what what i am doing <laughs> both with my life and with my computer you know but whatever uh, and um, it was about two years ago since I made a big update. Some of the, a lot of the code had, hadn't been touched at all for two years. I have, hadn't even looked at most of the code, you know, for two years. And um, I haven't been writing Bash for that long, you know. I, I have been writing Bash for about four years or something. So I am twice as experienced uh, now as I was back then. Uh, and uh, a lot of the things uh, were kind of cringe, you know, or not not that much really, but uh, still, you know, a lot of the time has been me understanding my old code and, and things like that and, and rewriting it and whatever. Uh, so my, my plan now is to really, um, I, I have some ideas here to, to make this uh, uh, dev i3s dev much more friendly and easier to to navigate and, and stuff like that and I, I i will i will probably spend a one month one more month here uh, but just focusing on on the the uh, environment for developing and, and creating like a guidelines uh, uh, repository here and that's not just because i i kind of in one way, I, I don't care so much about contributors, but I kind of feel that I, I might get just get tired of this myself and then no one knows what to do with this these uh, scripts, you know, and it will just uh, die. And that, that would be in a way sad. Maybe I would feel that it is so sad that I cannot never let it go and I will be stuck with this <laughs> for the rest of my life. So... Uh, that's that's what I want to do and this uh, gu uh, guidelines you know like formatting like uh, prefer to use arithmetic tests uh, global variables should be prefixed with an underscore things like that and and uh, maybe intendation let's not talk about what I prefer and how I would write the guidelines now but uh, things like that you know and if statements should be written like this blah 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 use two blank lines before every function or or whatever you know Guidelines like that, and maybe uh, a code of conduct type uh, 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 document. Uh, I, ha I have an ID, or I can say it. I, I will uh, use the same as Serenity OS, and you can uh, look at that project and see how, how their code of conduct looks like, and I will copy that. Um, but I, I also thought that I will write uh, like uh, extensive guides on how this is set up, because there are also Let's not get into it now, but there, there are, um, I use um, a, a custom framework for creating all, all of the scripts because as you can see, when, when we open one of these, you got a much more files than just a single script and a single uh, 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 man page. There are all of these build files or whatever. It's, uh, it's kind of a, and, and it is a custom uh, 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 thing here, this bashboard thing. I need to document how, how all of that works. Uh, and I also need to do what I have done here with i3 as. I have to do that with the bash, bash boot, um, pro program itself. And I really don't look forward to, to it, but I have to do that. 
I feel. Uh, but whatever, uh, it works. Uh, it works great now. Uh, I hope uh, hope um, that you will enjoy this new update. I think it's the by far the best uh, uh, version of i3 as that I have done. And it's the biggest uh, change from the previous version than it, uh, that it, than it has ever been in like stability and improvements. But at the same time, no new features. And that's uh, how, I, how I like uh, 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 software to be, you know. It's, uh, I, I think that's better when, when uh, developers kind of do it all for, and then just make everything better instead of more. If you get what I mean, but that's uh, very seldom the case. But uh, that's uh, how I wish things were. Yeah, you can read about all the scripts here. These links points to the wiki. Uh, I haven't updated the wiki now, but I will do that right after I have uh, uh, done this recording. It's just a git push. I just came to to realize that but this wiki contains uh, uh, it's basically markdown versions of the, the man pages because all of the commands if you would install this which you can do should also mention that I guess uh, installation ins instructions are here it's just a uh, since they are all bash scripts in this SRC directory these are all the commands so all you need to do is uh, find a way to execute these you know place them in your path but uh, the simplest way to do that is using the make file and just do a make install and it will install it to wherever uh, to your prefix here in the bin directory, whatever you, you get this. Uh, but the, the super duper easy great way to do this is to use AUR of course, uh, if you, but then you have to use the superior uh, Linux distribution known as Arch or a derivative. Uh, which supports AUR installations uh, and if you have that when you have that you can install this package and then you will also get automatic updates and what, what not when, when that happens or or it's not really op uh, automatic since you have to uh, update manually but you whatever if you know what it is you know what it is and uh, that's a way you can do it so I miss you so much Terry Davis um, one of the few actually good uh, YouTubers, probably top top five best programmers in the world ever, uh, completely unique uh, human being, uh, which may be the last unique human being also. Or maybe not, but uh, there are not many left, and and it doesn't matter if you're a programmer, or music, or whatever. It's uh, there are. We have to be careful with these, with these guys, you know. Have to be really, really careful. Don't waste them like uh, Terry Davis got got uh, sacrificed on the altar of of uh, lewd memes, you know. We, we shouldn't do that with, with people uh, like Terry Davis, you know. There are much, much worse uh, uh, people which are so bad that they are not even worthy being sacrificed. But that's maybe a different topic for a different, probably a different YouTuber, you know. But I miss you, Terry. I miss you so much. Um, miss, your, miss your videos. Miss your... Uh, jokes and your humor um, very very much and also like uh, just look at Terry Davis uh, programming streams on, on YouTube he, thing is it's not a meme he is very, very good and is when he's in that zone and in the right mode he can be very education uh, or what, what's it called yeah you learn a lot uh, watching and 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 uh, listening to Terry and hearing about his ideas, at least in my opinion. But most of all, I think it's just a, a, a really, really funny, or was a really, really funny uh, uh, guy. Uh, I miss him very, very, very much. 
Okay. Let's see, what do we have now? 84. Okay. Feels like I dropped a subscriber since uh, yesterday or something then. Well, we are soon at uh, 3000 subscribers. I was actually thinking about calling this version of i3s, uh, i3s version 3000 as a <laughs> celebration for, for, for uh, the 3k sub count, you know, but uh, then we might have had to wait uh, another 18 months, whatever. I don't care. I don't care so much. If I cared, I would upload more videos, of course, you know. Uh, but I, I'm doing this, and I, um, I think uh, I will not be super busy on YouTube. I will instead focus on this, uh, making this more developer-friendly version of i3s dev, um, because. Yeah, whatever. But it's not just... It's a good thing to do, I, I realized. Setting up a, a somewhat uh, larger organization, lots of different parts and, and, and things like that. It's a good, uh, just a good practice, you know. You want to be some kind of a project lead or whatever i don't i don't know not not that that's my plan but just it, it's just good to to have done something like it i feel for like uh, practice and experience so then next you can do another complicated project when you know how, how how a complicated project would would look like and this is not that complicated since everything is shell everything is the same thing basically but um, it is still something and the more I organize it and things like this, the more maybe complicated isn't the word I should use, maybe more complex. I could add like more individual like home pages and things like that and whatever you can. It's easier to extend something when it is organized, uh, I feel. What, whatever, who cares? Enjoy the new i3s and have a great day everybody. Bye bye bye.